Back here to Israel and some major archaeological discoveries at a site near Jerusalem known as Lifta. It's commonly known as an Arab village that was abandoned around the time the state of Israel was founded. But it also has an ancient past, according to a new archaeological survey, that has not yet been published. Now, some are accusing Israel of trying to bury the findings. Why? Some say it's because of financial interests. I-24 News managed to get a hold of part of the survey. In the next in-depth report, our culture correspondent Maya Margit takes a look at the implications. This is the story of a village frozen in time with an incredibly rich past. Abandoned, but not forgotten. Lifta. It may soon vanish forever because of controversial plans to build luxury villas there, transforming an endangered heritage site into a neighborhood for the ultra-rich. Lifta has a remarkable history. People have been living here for thousands of years thanks to natural spring water flowing through the area, and archaeologists even found remnants dating back to the biblical era. Located on the outskirts of Jerusalem, Lifta is mentioned in the Old Testament as part of the territory of the tribe of Judah. In the Bible, it's known as Mei Neftoach. One of the buildings here attests to Lifta's ancient past. These stones are believed to be from antiquity. Over the centuries, the village was inhabited by the Crusaders, the Ottomans, and later, Arab Palestinians, who lived here up until the Arab-Israeli War of 1948, when all the inhabitants fled. Afterwards, the state of Israel used Lifta to house Jewish immigrants from Yemen and Kurdistan. UNESCO put this place on a tentative list for World Heritage Sites and recently got even more attention when the World Monuments Fund added it to a top 25 list of most endangered sites in the world. Ahead of plans to develop the area into a luxury piece of real estate, the Israel Antiquities Authority was tasked with conducting an in-depth archaeological survey. For three years, archaeologists studied the buildings, roads, and foundations of Lifta. A small part of the area was turned into a nature reserve. Last April, the IAA published a video describing the exciting discoveries they made. There is no doubt this is a very important survey the IAA has conducted, and I am very proud to be a part of it. And I truly hope the results of the survey will lead to this village being preserved for future generations. In October, the archaeologists were going to publish their findings for the first time. But somebody stopped them. And the survey, once online, was mysteriously taken down. The Israel Land Authority, or ILA, is the official body for managing lands across the state of Israel. And it's also in charge of the luxury development project in Lifta. The Antiquities Authority and all the archaeologists involved in the survey declined to comment to I-24 News on the survey. They said only the ILA, the Land Authority, is allowed to discuss Lifta. The Land Authority argues that the site needs to be developed in order to be preserved. They also added that they intend to maintain Lifta's historic areas, though no further details were given. Ilan Steyer is the coordinator of a coalition of Jews and Arabs who have come together to try to save the site. Those of us who are interested in the history of Lifta requested the archaeological survey. We got it via a court order. The Israeli Land Authority, which is publicly funded by Israeli citizens, and the survey results are for us. So this information should be publicly available so that the professionals and experts can look at it and decide what needs to be done here. Jakub Ode, who was born in Lifta, is also an active member. For us, Lifta represents our memory, our history, our rights, above the ground and below. It's trees, it's water, it's stones. We do not intend to give up, never. It's unclear why the archaeological survey remains publicly unavailable so far. But I-24 News managed to get a copy of part of the hundreds of pages that make up the in-depth study. The archaeologists' recommendations include maintaining the historic areas, reconstructing the damaged buildings, and keeping the spring open to the public. And, most importantly, avoiding massive development in many areas. 
These are the remains from an ancient village in which we can see several layers pertaining to different periods of human settlement, unlike anything else we found in the Middle East. Giora Solar is the head of the Israeli ECOMOS Committee, the International Council on Monuments and Sites. He helped submit LIFTA to Israel's tentative list for World Heritage Sites at UNESCO. There are many interests, but the prevailing one is the land authority. They, they want to develop the area and sell houses and sell land. It's unclear why the Antiquities Authority is unable or unwilling to discuss LIFTA. Solar believes the recommendations may be too strict for existing building plans, and that money is somehow involved in the cover-up. The Israel Antiquities Authority was paid a lot of money to convey an archaeological, archaeological survey of the site. That means that they have a client. Normally I would not talk against the interest of my client, but they have an additional interest, the Antiquities Authority. Once the plan is approved, Every building, every uh, infrastructure project will require archaeological excavations. They will make more money. Ultimately, those trying to save Lifta believe the land authority will have to revise its current construction plans. Others argue the village can be saved with money. I would say an ideal scenario is that a, a philanthropic group buys it, restores it for the benefit of, uh, of the public. Whatever happens, everyone agrees that Lifta is an archaeological, historical, and cultural gem of immeasurable value that survived thousands of years of invasions, war, and human settlement. A place worth fighting for. Well, I've spent many, many times uh, hiking in Lifta with my family, and it is as, every bit as beautiful as that footage we've just seen. And Maya Margi joins us in the studio. Maya, I understand we have finally received some kind of response from the Israel Lands Authority. Right. It was quite difficult to get a response from anyone on this story because nobody is willing or able to talk about it. But the Israel Land Authority issued an official response to I-24 News, and these are some of the important points that they said. They said the new neighborhood will have 268 residential units, including including a lot for hotel and mixed residential commercial lots. The development plan takes into account that Lifta is a village meant for conservation. Other important points that they made, Lifta cannot be left as is since it is an ancient village with buildings in an advanced state of dilapidation and therefore poses a real danger to the public. And the Israel Land Authority intends to soon offer the land in the public tender while adhering to conservation efforts set forth by the plan. I'd say one of the real charms of Lifta is the fact that it is a ruin and I, I do think having hotels and luxury units it's there, that, that would be lost. And they also failed to respond to any questions about the survey, what happened to it. That was one of my main questions to them. They did not tell me. So there is a kind of lack of transparency here that is making people question the motivations behind this development plant. And hopefully, you know, something will be done to preserve the site because it is so immensely rich with history and archaeological discoveries. And a hugely important story, yes. which you, uh, thank you, Maya, for bringing that uh, to us. And stay with us.